I am a well in this great land, looking at its millions of boys and girls to draw from me the inexhaustible divinity and spread his grace everywhere as does the water drawn from a well. This is my story. The story of the son of Jainul Abdin and Ashama. The story of a lad who sold newspapers to help his brother. The story of a pupil reared by Shiva Subramanya Ayyar and Ayadure Solomon. The story of a student taught by teachers like Pandale. The story of an engineer spotted by MJK Menon and groomed by the legendary Professor Sarabhai. The story of a scientist tested by failures and setbacks. The story of a leader supported by a large team of brilliant and dedicated professionals. This story will end with me, for I have no belongings in the worldly sense. I have acquired nothing, built nothing, possessed nothing, no family, sons, daughters. I do not wish to set myself up as an example to others, but I believe that a few readers may draw inspiration and come to experience that ultimate satisfaction which can only be found in the life of the spirit. God's providence is your inheritance. The bloodline of my great-grandfather Aul, my grandfather Pakir, and my father Jainul Abdin may end with Abdul Kalam. But God's grace will never cease, for it is eternal. I was born into a middle-class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram. My father, Jainul Abdin, had neither much formal education nor much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashim. I was one of many children, a short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall and handsome parents. We lived in our ancestral house, which was built in the middle of the 19th century. It was a fairly large pakka house on the mosque street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for. In fact, I would say mine was a very secure childhood, both materially and emotionally. The famous Shiva temple, which makes Rameshwaram so sacred to pilgrims, was about a 10-minute walk from our house. Our locality was predominantly Muslim, but there were quite a few Hindu families too, living amicably with their Muslim neighbors. There was a very old mosque in our locality where my father would take me for evening prayers. The high priest of the Rameshwaram temple, Pakshi Lakshmana Shastri, was a very close friend of my father's. One of the most vivid memories of my early childhood is of the two men, each in his traditional attire, discussing spiritual matters. My father could convey complex spiritual concepts in very simple down-to-earth Tamil. He once told me, When troubles come, try to understand the relevance of your sufferings. Adversity always presents opportunities for introspection. I have throughout my life tried to emulate my father in my own world of science and technology. I feel convinced that there exists a divine power 
that can lift one up from confusion, misery, melancholy and failure and guide one to one's true place. I was about six years old when my father embarked on the project of building a wooden sailboat to take pilgrims from Rameshwaram to Dhanushkodi and back. He worked at building the boat on the seashore with the help of a relative, Ahmad Jallaluddin, who later married my sister, Zohra. Ahmad Jallaluddin became a close friend of mine, despite the difference of 15 years in our ages. We used to go for long walks together every evening. As we started from Mosque Street, our first halt would be at the imposing temple of Lord Shiva, where we would circle around the temple with the same reverence as any other pilgrim. Jalaluddin's schooling had been limited, principally because of his family's straitened circumstances. At the time I speak of, he was the only person on the entire island who could write English. He wrote letters for almost anybody in need. Jalaluddin always spoke to me about educated people, of scientific discoveries, of contemporary literature, and of the achievements of medical science. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness. But it was the time I spent with Jalaluddin and Shamsuddin that perhaps contributed most to the uniqueness of my childhood and made all the difference in my later life. However poor, underprivileged or small, need feel disheartened about life. Problems are a part of life. Suffering is the essence of success. As someone said, God has not promised skies always blue, flower strewn pathways all our life through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. I will not be presumptuous enough to say that my life can be a role model for anybody. But some poor child, living in an obscure place, in an underprivileged social setting, may find a little solace in the way my destiny has been shaped. It could perhaps help such children liberate themselves from the bondage of their illusory backwardness and hopelessness. Irrespective of where they are right now, they should be aware that God is with them. And when he is with them, who can be against them? Let the latent fire in the heart of every Indian acquire wings and the glory of this great country light up the sky. Mm -hmm.